Welcome back to Grim and Whim. Today I wanted to introduce a new series named Scary Science, where we will look into a variety of topics underneath the scientific umbrella that are both interesting and terrifying, something that I very much enjoy. I have always been fascinated by ancient animals. I grew up loving to learn about dinosaurs, and so much so that I truly believed I would be a paleontologist one day. I remember obsessively reading my DK book about dinosaurs and other ancient animals and fauna, and my little dork self was so intrigued by what life looked like during different eras of Earth millions and millions upon millions of years ago. And today I thought I'd share some of these curious ancient creatures with you all. So let's get started. First up, we have a nightmarish creature that looks like a cross between a school bus, a demonic turkey, and Freddy Krueger. And this beautiful abomination is named the Therizinosaurus. In the late Cretaceous period, this creature roamed the earth with other fairly large dinosaurs like the Albertosaurus and the quite well-known T-Rex. But what set Therizinosaurus apart was its unique limbs. On each of the three digits on its hands, they had long claws, which were about three feet long. And it looks like Freddy Krueger. If Freddy was, you know, 33 feet in length and weighed around 11,000 pounds. But despite this dinosaur's appearance with its, you know, scythe-like claws and sharp teeth, and the fact that it was a member of the theropod clan, which is largely made up of carnivores, this dinosaur is actually believed to be a plant-eating dinosaur or an herbivore. And despite the fact that meat was off the menu for this animal, it doesn't mean that it wasn't dangerous. If it was prowling the earth today, the Therizinosaurus would have no problem defending its resources, even against the T-Rex. In fact, a lot of researchers have claimed that T-Rex probably tried to steer clear of the Therizinosaurus because of its appearance and also because it just didn't want to mess with them. It was a fierce herbivore. However, luckily for us, or I don't know, maybe not lucky for us, I would like to see one in real life, but this nightmare on Elm Street died out approximately 66 million years ago during the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. And this event, scientists believe that basically what happened was the massive asteroid crashed into Earth and then, you know, demolished not only this species, but most of the species on planet Earth. Next up, we have a monstrous sea creature that many believe was the inspiration for the mythical beast, the Leviathan. Now, you may have heard of the Megalodon, the giant shark that some people believe is still lurking in the ocean's depths, like in the Marianas Trench, but this creature was also a titan of the ocean and a very fearsome predator. The Basilosaurus, or King Lizard, was actually a horrendously huge whale from the late Eocene, and this era was approximately 41.3 to 33.9 million years ago. And it was certainly an apex predator, and it could take on just about anything it came across in its environment. Initially, when they found its remains, they thought that this creature was a giant reptile. Therefore, they named it the Basilosaurus, and having the suffix saurus is, you know, dinosaur, you know? It's the ancient Greek word for lizard. But this is actually closer to modern whales. And the Basilosaurus was originally found in Alabama. However, there have been fossils found in 
every continent, even Antarctica. This creature could grow up to 66 feet long, and it weighed up to 15 tons. So its comparison to a leviathan definitely makes sense. Now, the modern blue whale is actually quite a bit bigger. It grows up to 100 feet in length, and blue whales are known to be gentle giants. They really aren't dangerous to humans. But the Basilosaurus would likely not be so docile. And unlike most modern whales who have cone-shaped teeth, the teeth of the Basilosaurus were much sharper and looked more like the teeth of a typical land carnivore. It went extinct during the extinction event that ended the Eocene period due to global cooling which also erased many other types of ancient whales and ancient sea creatures. I think we can agree that today's oceans would have looked a lot different if this creature had survived. And like I said before, many people think that the megalodon is, you know, still lurking in the depths, despite most people believing that the megalodon actually would have preferred warmer and more shallow water and really wouldn't have been able to survive in the deep, deep depths of the Marianas Trench. But who knows? Perhaps the Basilosaurus is able to survive in those depths. Next, we have the Pelagornis sandersi, aka my absolute greatest fear. So fun fact about me, I have a phobia of animals that fly. I don't like birds or any type of insects. I don't like bats. And when I say insects, I mean I don't like butterflies. I'm scared of moths, cicadas, bees. If it flies, I I don't want it anywhere near me. I'm just, I'm, I don't know. It's just, it's always been a thing for me. I just don't like any creature that flies. And that's why if the Pelagornis sandersi, the largest bird in history, if it were still alive today, you would find me living the rest of my days in an underground bunker because I would be way too afraid to go outside. This ancient seabird was just monstrous and it had a wingspan of at least 21 feet. And it sort of looks like a seagull with gigantism. Like it it definitely does resemble a modern seagull. And not much is known about this ancient bird and its extinction is shrouded in mystery. What we do know about this bird is that it had short stumpy legs. So it likely didn't spend too much time on land because it would have been at a disadvantage. And the Pelagornis also had a series of bony, teeth-like protrusions coming out of its long jaws. And it was able to swoop down and scoop out large fish and squids to eat along the eastern coast of what is now North America. While it's unclear how this giant bird became extinct, most biologists believe that pelicans and storks are likely the modern-day relatives of the Pelagornis sandersi. Next, we have one of my personal favorite animals to learn about, and that is the Mosasaurus. And I remember reading about this animal when I was younger and seeing it in a movie for the first time obviously you know it's a you know cgi rendition of you know the creature but in jurassic world where you know it pops out of the water um while people are watching uh sort of like you know sea world and just to see its size and to see it you know almost come to life it was so cool seeing that in theaters So whatever your thoughts are on, you know, Jurassic World or Jurassic Park and its accuracies, you know, I I definitely know 
that there are some pretty big inaccuracies, especially the size of the raptors, considering most raptors were about the size of my pit bull, if not smaller. But I just so enjoyed seeing it in Jurassic World. It made my little like eight-year-old heart so happy (laughs) because um, I just, I loved um, the Mosasaurus and learning about it as a kid. So basically, the um, Mosasaurus, it, it kind of looks almost like a um, like a really big alligator or crocodile, but um, it is an enormous aquatic lizard of the late Cretaceous period, and it would have been most commonly found in the North Atlantic Ocean, and it was definitely a carnivore, and the largest species of the mosasaur species they could actually grow to over 50 feet long and despite the fact that it is a reptile and not a fish um, it was a quick swimmer i mean it was built to live in water the mosasaurus could reach speeds up to 30 miles per hour and they could swim in waters as deep as 600 feet and when it came to their diet they ate just about everything i mean sharks fish even birds they would you know come out of the water like we saw in jurassic world and um, they would also eat you know, mollusks, and they even went after other mosasaurs. And these animals had an incredibly strong bite force. They had around 40 to 50 teeth that were about 0.98 to 0.18 inches long. And its bite force was between 13,000 to 16,000 pounds per square inch, which is incredible. And I actually found this really cool um, image on Reddit while I was doing research and just kind of comparing the sizes of the um, Mosasaurus and the size that it actually got to compared to how it was, you know, drawn and or illustrated for Jurassic World. And as you can see, the Mosasaurus in both, you know, Jurassic World and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom are much, 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 much bigger than the actual Mosasaurus. But the Mosasaurus was a fearsome creature, very fast, very prey-driven, and it was definitely an apex predator. So despite the fact that what we saw in the movies was not as big as it actually was, if this creature was in our oceans today, I don't think there are many sharks, whales, or otherwise that really would have stood much of a chance unless, you know, they lived deeper than the 600 feet that the Mosasaurus would dive to. And the Mosasaurus was not timid and not afraid to come out of the water. And so what's also very scary is that, like I said before, they would pop out of the ocean to snatch birds. So who's to say, you know, you're on a carnival cruise ship and one just decides to pop out or you're out fishing or whatever, spending time in the ocean, humans would totally be on the menu if they were in their environment, if we were in the Mosasaurus' environment, it's home. And at the end of the day, there's no escaping one because humans, our bodies really were not built to you know, sustain being in water for very long periods of time. We are not fast. Even the fastest swimmer in the world is not going to out swim a mosasaur. So I guess be happy that these are no longer lurking in our waters today because I don't know about you, I'm already very nervous about the ocean and deep water. I really am terrified of deep water. And 
this would not help that fact. <laughs> Finally, we have an ancient creature named the Arthropleura. This is an 8.5 foot long millipede from the Carboniferous era. And this is a creepy crawly that I'm very happy no longer exists. And like I said before, I'm terrified of flying creatures, flying insects, whatever, but I'm not a fan of other insects either. I'm just, I don't like bugs. I understand their purpose. I appreciate people who study insects and love them. And I, I really do. I, I understand that they are an important part of our environment. However, quick tangent, in my classroom just a few weeks ago, there was either a huge centipede or millipede, I'm not really sure, but it was crawling around and I just about left my classroom. I was so freaked out. I saw it out of the corner of my eye and I was like, I don't think I can keep teaching right now knowing that this is in my room. And so, ugh. Anyways, the Arthropleura it really puts modern millipedes to shame in terms of its size. While like modern millipedes, it was an herbivore feeding on dead plant matter, this does not mean that it wasn't threatening. According to recent discoveries, fossil trackways show that the Arthropleura could move very quickly, much faster than you would expect an animal of this size to move. And if you had the misfortune of coming upon this animal and you accidentally spook it, it could actually rear up into a defensive posture. And with it being the largest known land invertebrate in history, I personally would not want to stick around to see what's next. And if I'm afraid of you know, little centipedes and millipedes that are, you know, a couple inches maybe in length, if, if not smaller, I think the one in my classroom was smaller, and I was freaked out by that, seeing an 8.5 foot long version of that, I mean, I don't even know what I would do. I don't even know if you could outrun it because it's very long, but it has all these, you know, little, you know, undulating legs and it could get pretty fast. I, um, I was looking at how fast they could move and it seems like there's some discrepancies among scientists on how fast it was able to move but in general it says that it could move fairly quickly and so oh, I definitely would not want to figure out whether or not this creature was a threat or not. But with all that being said, I hope that you enjoyed learning about these ancient animals. And if you like this type of content, please give me some feedback. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you can support me by subscribing. You can like the video. You can comment down below. And it really helps me out. And it gives me some um, perspective on what my audience is liking or disliking. So thank you so much for watching and or listening. And stay safe out there. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me. It's goodbye for now, but I hope to haunt you again soon. <laughs>